Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's biology class. I am Miss Angler, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at a microorganisms and immunity question, specifically on bacteria. Now, this is a hard-leveled question, so if you're ready to do some practice before an exam or a test, this is the perfect thing to do. And if you'd like to attempt the questions, pause the video now so you can do so, and then I'm going to run through the questions, show you how you correctly answer them and how to unpack them, and then I will show you the memo at the end. As always, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, like it, subscribe, and turn your notifications on because every Tuesday and Thursday, I post new content for grades 8 to 12 biology. All right, let's break down this question. Now, I often see a lot of people complaining about how difficult application questions are in exams and tests, particularly the experiment ones like the one you see here. And I want you to know that actually a lot of information is given to you and sometimes we overlook it. And this beginning paragraph is really important and I'm gonna show you why now. Now, in the beginning it says a grade 11 learner wanted to investigate whether a new antibiotic called vibromycin could restrict the production of a population of bacteria which was resistant to other antibiotics. Now, I want to point something out to you. The moment they start to say to investigate, you must know that that is the aim of the experiment. Now, if that is the aim of the experiment, everybody, that means you can already find the independent and the dependent variable. And I suggest that you highlight the sentence in your own exams and tests, because often one of the questions that you'll actually see later on will ask you to identify the variables. And if you take it directly from the paragraph, you'll guarantee a correct answer. Now, before we go any further, let's just quickly isolate the independent and dependent variable. So we know in the beginning it says to investigate whether a new antibiotic, so that is going to be our one variable, uh, vibromycin, could restrict the production of a population of bacteria. In other words, growth of that bacteria. Uh, and so now what we have is our two variables. So let's keep that in mind and let's keep moving through the paragraph. It said their investigation was set up as follows. Now, it's important to take note of what they did and how they set it up. The bacteria was cultured in the same type of agar medium. Remember, agar is like a gel. In 20 Petri dishes, they were all the same size, and then they were divided into two groups. One group received no treatment, and the second group was treated with vibromycin, all of the same concentration. You'll see now why I'm highlighting all these things that they kept the same all the way through. Remember, those are our fixed variables. It then goes on to say that the Petri dish was then incubated under the same conditions and exam for uh, examined for bacterial growth. The diameter of the area where no bacteria grew was measured for each Petri dish. They're also telling us how they measured the effectiveness of the antibiotic. Now let's take a look at the questions and see how we should appropriately answer them to get full marks. Now under the first question, it says here that for this investigation, please identify the dependent variable. Well, as I mentioned earlier in the beginning where I underlined in blue, we've actually already identified the independent variable from the aim as well as the dependent variable. So our dependent variable is going to be the growth of the population of our bacteria. The next question says three factors that should have been kept during this investigation other than those mentioned. Now remember, what we are looking for here is our fixed variables. Now do you see all the ones that I highlighted in red earlier in the paragraph? You can't list any of those. So that means you have to think of others that you want to list of factors that you should have kept constant. So you can't write same size Petri dish, same, uh, same type of agar, um, same concentration of antibiotic. Those are already given. You have to mention others. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, what are some of the others? Some of the others could be the amount of bacteria applied. It also doesn't say what type of bacteria either. It just says a population of bacteria. So perhaps the species of bacteria needs to be stipulated. So if you think quite hard, you'll be able to come up with these. But this is also why many people struggle with these questions, because it can be quite tricky. Number question 2.2.2, why did the scientist use more than one Petri dish? Remember, if we always use more than one sample, we are increasing the reliability. 
Remember, reliability is to increase the sample size, redo the experiment, or calculate an average. Looking on to the second, uh, sorry, the third question, what was the aim of group one in this investigation? In other words, this group that we see here, what was the purpose of them? Well, it's for one mark, so we don't need to go into too much detail. It's the control group. It's the group that we are going to use to compare because they received no antibiotic. Question four, a similar experiment was done in which the cultured bacteria were then divided into five groups. These groups were then treated with different concentrations of vibromycin. Now, what you have to do is you need to formulate a hypothesis for this investigation and then state the independent variable. Now, it's really important that you get A right because B is linked to it. If you don't know this, but when you write a hypothesis, you are supposed to include both of your variables, the independent and the dependent variable, which means that if the hypothesis is wrong, you are going to get um, question B wrong, where you state your independent variable as well. So what possibly could be our hypothesis? Well, this experiment is slightly different because if you notice here, it says different concentrations of vibromycin, which means that each of those five groups are going to get different amounts. So now your hypothesis should be something along the lines of as the concentration of vibromycin increases, so will the bacterial population decrease. Or maybe you will say, uh, if the uh, antibiotic uh, level is too low, then it will have no effect on the bacterial population. You need to make a prediction. Remember, that's what a hypothesis is. Now, let's say I stayed with the whole, um, as the concentration increases, so does the population decrease. My independent variable for this experiment would be the different concentrations because it's the thing I'm controlling, right? It's the thing that I'm testing for. The dependent variable, if you've forgotten, is the variable you are measuring. You, you don't know what the answer will be. That's why it's dependent on the independent variable. And in this case, that answer is the different concentrations of antibiotics or vibromycin. Now, you'll notice I didn't really speak very much about the diagram that they provided up here. And it's simply actually just a visual aid to help some learners who perhaps can't envision what this looks like. And in this instance, it wasn't really necessary to include this picture, but I think they included it so that people could really imagine what this looked like. And all you're looking at is a comparison between the bacterial growth with or without the vibromycin on it. And I think it just helps people who need to visualize this a little bit better. But it's definitely not necessary to take notice too much of this diagram. Now, if you did attempt these questions, here is the memo for you to go through your answers and you can have a look at them. These are, of course, perfect memo answers. So yours can always be interpreted in some of these um, particular answers, um, particularly if we look at 2.2.4, the hypothesis one. Um, this one, remember, you can see they've given you options here. So there's all these ors. There's actually three that you can have here. Please note that um, you have to have all your answer from one of them. In other words, you can't have one mark coming from this answer and then one mark coming from that answer. It's all or nothing within those options. And likewise, I'd also like to bring your attention to question 2.2.1b. You see it says here, mark first three only. If a question says provide two, provide five, we as markers, as teachers, as examiners can only mark the first however many we've asked for. So we ask for three. If you give us four and the first three are incorrect, but the, the last one is right, we cannot mark it because the question says only give three. So please only give what the um, question paper asks for. Now, as always, if this has helped and you've enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below to tell me what you'd like to see or if you'd like to see more of these videos. I'm going to be posting way more of these videos closer to exam time, especially um, when that comes up later in the year. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you all again soon. Bye!